Another common HPLC question that comes up is, what's the deal with void volume, void time? What does it mean? How do you calculate it? So let me take a minute to explain this because this is important. Um, first, uh, an apology from chromatographers worldwide for not getting our act together and coming up with one common term. We call this term T0, T sub naught, um, uh, and uh, because it's for the naught retention time. It's also called T sub M for the retention time of the mobile phase. Uh, it's called the void volume, the void time, the solvent front, the air peak. All of these terms are referring to the same thing, and that is technically uh, T0 or void time is the amount of time it takes an unretained compound to travel through the column. Now in HPLC, what does that mean? Most of us are doing reverse phase, uh, so we need something very polar that would come off in the void volume that would come off along with the mobile phase. Uh, in HPLC, traditionally people use uracil. It's the most common void volume marker. It is an organic compound that is very polar, and it, it eludes uh, in or very close to the void volume. So what we're talking about here is it takes a certain amount of time for the mobile phase to get from the beginning of the column to the end, and that is the void time. How long does it take me to flush out the column? I think of a column uh, as uh, it's gonna take a, a certain amount of time for the analyte to get from the front of the column to the bottom. It can't just jump, it must travel through at the speed of the mobile phase. So T0 is the time it takes the mobile phase to travel through your column. Now, why is that important? First thing is um, when we equilibrate a column, when we say how long does it take to equilibrate a column, the answer is five column volumes. Well, what's a column volume? Well, it's a T0. It's how long it takes to flush the column once. You need five times that to equilibrate a column so it's ready to go for your next run. So in HPLC, when we're doing uh, gradients or if we're starting with a brand new column, we need to equilibrate it with a new mobile phase and we need five column volumes to do that. So let's talk more about T0 and column volumes. Uh, let's talk about how you would actually measure this. So I mentioned uracil is commonly used, not my personal favorite, but most people in the industry use it. Um, so uh, uracil, uh, you could inject it, it comes off T0, or if you inject just solvent, just uh, your uh, sample solvent, and blow up the baseline, you will see a disturbance. You'll see a sine wave at the baseline that is your T0. So there is a way to physically measure it. Uh, now, let me give you a way to estimate it. And this is uh, a rule of thumb, an estimation, but it's a really useful rule of thumb. And here's how it goes. This works for standard diameter HPLC columns. So if your column is 4.6 millimeter ID, and that's the standard diameter column, anyone out there doing HPLC, you're probably using 4.6 millimeter. If you're not, I'll put you in a special category, you're using 2.1, but 4.6 millimeter is what most of us are using. So that column, every 10 centimeters of column contains one milliliter of void volume. Now the engineers on there, I know what you're thinking. Ooh, we could calculate this, right? We have a cylinder, pi r squared L. Well, we could calculate the volume of the cylinder, but remember there's something inside the column other than the mobile phase. That's the stationary phase. So a typical column is about 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent empty space. That is the void volume of the column. So the number I'm giving you is a pretty good rule of thumb. And that is every 10 centimeters of column contains approximately one milliliter of void. So let's do a little bit of math. Uh, I got my uh, LC sitting back here. In that, I'm using a five centimeter column. It's my favorite column, five centimeter, 4.6 millimeter ID. What is the void volume of that column? Yeah, it's only five centimeters, so it's half a milliliter void volume. So why is that important? Well, when it's time to really re-equilibrate that column, I'm gonna need to wait five times that volume. Okay, let's do some real math. I got a, a five centimeter column. It's got a half mil void. I need five times that. Do the math, that's two and a half milliliters. If I'm running at two at one mil a minute, that's gonna take two and a half minutes to really cool rate my column. You see how I did that math? It wasn't rocket science. So um, let's keep going. What if I have that uh, half mil column? I need two and a half mils of, of volume to go through it to re-equilibrate. But instead of running one mil a minute, I'm running two mils a minute. So instead of two and a half minutes, it takes me one and a quarter minutes to re-equilibrate my columns at two mils a minute. Okay, pretty cool. That's why I like short columns. Let's do one other example. Um, let's say you got a 25 centimeter column. That is the uh, uh, very old fashioned, but still the most common column sold out there. And that column, it's 25 centimeters, 4.6 millimeter ID, the most common column dimensions out there. So what is the void volume of that column? Yeah, 25 centimeters, two and a half, two and a half milliliters. Okay, that's the volume of the column. So if, uh, if I need to re-equilibrate the column, how long does it take to equilibrate the column? Wow, 
Uh, that's two and a half times five, that's 12 and a half milliliters. Okay, if I'm running one mil a minute, how long does it take to cold break that column? That's 12 and a half minutes. So you get the idea that it's important to know what the void volume is. And uh, more importantly, what you'll learn from modern chromatography is that we like to go to smaller particles, allows us to go to shorter columns and have less void volume. Not only is our analysis faster, my five centimeter column is five times faster than your 25 centimeter, but uh, it also takes five times less time to equilibrate. So that's my little uh, 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 notes on what void volume means and how to calculate void volume. Uh, the special category folks, you know, I said there's the second most popular size is 2.1 millimeter. Um, don't ask me where those sizes came from. It is what it is. So 2.1 millimeter is uh, uh, the most common size if you're doing LCMS spec. So if you're doing LCMS spec right off the bat, I'd say 2.1 millimeter column, take all the numbers I gave you and divide by five. Uh, so you can do the, the, the math yourself, take the ratio of the column diameters, square that, uh, and that is the ratio you'll have to multiply your, uh, your new flow rate and so forth. So everything I said, um, if uh, 10 centimeters a column has one milliliter void, the 10 centimeter column, then uh, if we have the small diameter, 10 centimeters of column would have 0.2 milliliters of void. Okay, so everything is five times less. Uh, hopefully that helps understand a little bit about the void volume, void time in the HPLC world. Um, uh, if you have more questions, you know where to go. Go to axionlabs.com and uh, send us a, a question.